Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're taking a look at this incredible strategy game called Command Modern Air Naval Operations. This is actually not a new game, but it's a game I've been playing for quite a few years now and decided that it's about time I actually took a look at it and reviewed it as well, because I briefly mentioned this game in the last video where I was talking about um, a space game known as Distant World, um, Distant World's Universe, and I decided that we'll... I might as well take a look at this game because it's by the same company and it's way, way more advanced in terms of actual strategy. It is very, very realistic. And what's most importantly is that it's actually one of the most incredible, most epic strategy games I've ever played. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So uh, this is a game that, first of all, doesn't really have much in terms of graphics. And if you are, if you love your strategy games with a lot of graphics in them, you will be pleasantly surprised that it has very, very barely any. As a matter of fact, most of your um, gameplay will be on a map. It's, uh, it's essentially a map with a lot of information on it, a lot of uh, realistic data, and all of this is uh, made with exceptional accuracy. All of the scenarios in this game are realistic. They are also are, are usually based on real situations or hypothetical situations that could have gone wrong. Now, this game has both campaign mode and scenario modes. And campaign is, um, I, I believe there's currently only one. It's known as Northern Inferno. It's basically a hypothetical war between USSR and uh, NATO somewhere in the late 80s or possibly early 90s. But I'm gonna actually take a look at this right here. When you buy this game, you only get the scenarios and there's a tremendous amount of them. First of all, there is these life scenarios which you can buy as um, separate DLCs and these are all based on real life situations. Like for example, the modern version of Korean Missile Crisis of 2017 or the um, conflict between Republic of China and uh, various Southeast Asian countries which was started by or started because of these islands known as um, Sp Spartly Islands, I believe, which are located right here. And I'm actually going to take a look at that scenario because I love that one. It's actually super, super fun and very difficult as well. Uh, there's also the um, the Rus Russian invasion of Ukraine uh, or tensions in Eastern Ukraine, that is. There's also two Brexit-based scenarios where basically a war breaks out because of the British breakaway from, uh, from the um, EU and, and so on and so forth. And um, there's also some standalone scenarios right here and there's quite a lot of them as well. There's uh, over 30 different scenarios um, anywhere between late uh, 1950s to modern age with all kinds of equipment on all kinds of weaponry. And... If you think that's not enough, you go on Steam, Steam Workshop, and you find yourself with like literally close to several hundreds um, fan base scenarios. Some of them are absolutely incredible. Some of them are actual um, campaigns with many different missions, and some of them are exceptionally made. Now, so this game will give you literally hundreds of hours of fun, especially if you enjoy this kind of stuff. But I'm gonna just show you um, this right here because it's probably a sort of a, a good, um, approximation of what this game is like and will give you an idea of whether you like it or not. So let's load this. It's called Spartly Spat. It's basically a scenario where the United States is trying to protect the Southeast Asian countries from potential aggression from China, or you can play as China and try to basically be the aggressor. But from your perspective, it's that the US is trying to approach your islands that you claimed for yourself and you basically are trying to get rid of their ships if they decide to attack you. So just for fun, I'm actually gonna play as the uh, People Liberation Army Navy and basically China. And our job is to essentially try to oppose the United States. And so when you just start the game, this is what you'll see. This is all in real time. And basically it looks like something you would expect from an actual, you know, army map. Uh, so you have this radar map, you have these various um, ships and aircraft on your map. And you kind of will probably feel overwhelmed, overwhelmed at first because you might not know what to do. But I'm just going to give you an idea what, what's happening here. So this right here, uh, you can see that there's a little yellow box with a black triangle. That's um, some sort of an aircraft uh, capable ship and specifically this is an aircraft carrier i believe it's called the liaoning uh, but i might be mispronouncing this and this is a, a task force that contains seven different units these are all realistic ships that um, 
China actually does possess. Uh, we can actually look at group composition by pressing this button and you can essentially click on each individu individual ship and it will give you its um, statistics, it will give you what kind of weaponry it has. It will take quite a long while to learn all of this, but for anyone interested in realistic games, specifically um, one, someone who's a really sort of a military buff and wants to know all of this in detail, this is a perfect game because all of these are realistic weapons, realistic sort of um, schematics and realistic navy boats and of course aircraft. So here we have everything on each of the ships and um, we don't really need to look at them uh, right now, but we do need to look at our aircraft because we'll be using these a lot since this is actually in the middle of the ocean, we have an aircraft carrier, so we do have to use some of our aircraft and potentially start launching some of them to uh, either get some kind of a um, information on our enemy or potentially even attack our enemy. So here we have um, 19 aircraft ready to go and all of these will have different missions or uh, different loadouts that you can actually change but usually it takes a few hours to change the loadout so you might not want to do this right away but so for example this right here flying shark is an air superiority craft um it has long range um anti-air missiles specifically it has like what six of them which is a pretty good loadout so these will be excellent to take care of any kind of um, enemy aircraft that will try to approach you and we can actually right away launch a few of them as a group we're gonna see what it looks like uh, and send them on a patrol somewhere right here and try to find any enemy aircraft that will actually shoot down there's also one aircraft already in the air. This uh, right here is, I believe, um, yeah, okay. So this is an anti-submarine warfare fixed wing aircraft. Um, now, if you don't really know what it looks like and what it does, you can actually Wikipedia this and it does help uh, to kind of wiki this just to give you a visual representation of what it looks like. Uh, but essentially this craft looks like this. It's an AN-12 uh, aircraft that is capable of uh, looking for submarines and even launching torpedoes to destroy those submarines. So it's a pretty useful aircraft. And um, it actually has uh, 80 passive uh, sonar buoys to detect submarines and 20 active ones. And um, I believe it has some missiles. Oh yeah, torpedoes, eight torpedoes right here. So we can actually take it and plot a course for it and it will just fly around and um, we might, if we actually suspect an area with submarine in it, we might launch some of these sonar buoys to try to look for it. But anti-submarine warfare in this game is ridiculously complex and it's also very, very difficult. But what we might wanna do right now actually is go into sensors and at least enable its radar because we want to be able to detect something. So it's going to have its radar uh, detecting potential targets for us. Um, in this particular mission, we also have several islands that are already occupied by us. And these islands actually do have uh, some capabilities to uh, launch missiles against aircraft. These islands are right here and all of them have radars on them and some of them have anti-air missiles. Um, we also have one submarine that's sort of lurking around, but we're going to go ahead and send it this way because this is where the enemy is going to be coming from. And there's actually at least one enemy submarine in the area, but its location is always randomized, so you can never really predict where it's going to be. Uh, but we might be lucky, we might actually be able to detect it as well. Uh, the way the submarines work is, well, first of all, they're extremely realistic. They're very, very quiet. It's very hard to detect them. You need to use a lot of um, helicopters uh, with sonar buoys or airplane with sonar buoys to try to basically locate them. Uh, but this particular submarine um, is currently... Oh, wow, it's actually very, very shallow. Uh, I need to I need to potentially send it a little bit deeper than that because this is dangerously, dangerously low. So we're going to go into its settings and we're going to go for, uh, let's go for cruise speed. So basically it's gonna go move fast and it's going to go sh in shallow waters or maybe, no, periscope depth. Yeah, periscope depth. And we're also going to enable its radar because we want to detect um, enemy presence in this area. And just because I'm gonna be a risk taker, I'm also gonna enable sonar just to see if we can detect enemy submarine before it detects us. But this is actually a very dangerous maneuver because you now are going to be actively using your sonar, meaning that anyone can actually detect you pretty quickly. But that just for fun, I wanna see if I can actually maybe detect enemy submarine and then sink it before it sinks me. Um, all right, so 
if you've already confused and think this is super complex, it gets more complex. So, because we actually do have land installations here, there's other areas that have airports air, and um, airfields with airplane on, airplanes on them. So, this particular one has 10 different airplanes and all of these are also air superiority. So, we're going to maybe launch a few of these as well, just as a kind of a precaution. Uh, you can see or you can tell if there's aircraft by looking at those yellow boxes with um, with tri black triangles in them. And I'm going to actually launch quite a few of these because some of these provide uh, maritime surveillance, which is super important. They basically are like flying radars, which are essential for this type of mission. And one of these airports actually has super essential aircraft. These are a land or naval um, attack craft. Basically, these will be delivering missiles to attack enemy ships or to attack enemy installations. We don't have installations in this particular mission, but we do have ships. So we're going to maybe launch a group of three and send them at where I think the enemy is, just just for fun. We're actually we're not supposed to start the war here, but um, I know that the war usually starts, so we might as well be the first to attack. We also have um, the so-called cow airplane, which is basically the air refueling uh, flying fortress. Basically, it looks like this. It's essentially an aircraft that allows you to refuel other aircraft in the air. Um, you can kind of just place them around the map. Like I could actually potentially place them in um, crucial areas where I think my aircraft will be patrolling and might run out of fuel. And they'll just kind of circle around and you can approach them and uh, use them as a refueling station. The only thing is that not all aircraft are able to refuel, and so there might be a bit of a problem um, if I launch an aircraft and, I, and it's unable to refuel. Okay, so we have our first launch. I believe it's right here. And that's our um, Su Su-33 aircraft. That's essentially our attack craft. I'm going to actually launch them right here because I know this is where potentially enemy aircraft will be. And in this particular mission, the enemy will also be jamming us. Um, there's going to be at least one aircraft carrier um, or potentially some kind of a US presence, and it will be actually Marine Forces. And mar Marine Forces, US Marine Forces often use um, this beautiful creation of an aircraft known as the Prowler. So this is what it looked like before, and I'm not sure if it still looks like this, but uh, this is the older version of the Jammer aircraft that basically jams the radar and prevents enemy from detecting the exact location of um, of essentially your forces. Uh, so these will be flying around in this mission, and they'll actually be causing quite a lot of havoc to my forces. Um, but the craft I just launched, which is right there, it's a SU-33 attack aircraft. You can kind of see the red circle. This is essentially how far their missiles can reach. And they are pretty, uh, it's a pretty long distance uh, missile, so they are pretty far. But we need to actually give them some sensors, right? So we're going to go ahead and enable the radar. And so now they have radar capability and they can see this far. So, all right, so this is good so far. Um, in this mission, which I actually have not been able to win as China just yet, um, things will go out of control pretty fast. If you want to try this mission later on by yourself, expect a lot of forces to come from these airports as well, because Vietnam will also join the so-called Guardian Force to try to attack you and the Philippines as well. So all of these airports will be sending all of these aircraft at you and you'll, be, you'll have enemies surrounding you from all sides. So you have to be kind of careful. But just uh, for this particular uh, video, I wanted to kind of show you how the battles work and they, they do get really complex. So I'm sending my aircraft right there. They're going to be coming from this direction. And I'm also going to send my task force toward this direction as well. And I'm going to give them um, highest possible speed. Basically, we're going to go in here and tell them to flank all the way there. They're going to be moving as fast as possible because we want to protect that area. In this mission, the idea is you're not allowed to let in the enemy into any of these points. V1, V2, V3, V4. And if they do approach those points, it's basically automatic war. And um, usually it kind of happens by default. So we're going to assume that it's going to happen and we're going to strike first. I'm going to send all of my aircraft and prepare for immediate attack. This is hypothetically not what China would do. As a matter of fact, China would very likely not be the aggressor in this situation and would probably uh, try to avoid war whatsoever. Uh, but uh, we're going to be the crazy China. We're going to play as China that 
doesn't care. China that just wants to start a war. Now you can see this craft is already jammed. And that's coming from the jammer that is where? Where is it located? Let's find it. Let's actually, uh, there's a, a boat I forgot about. This boat also has a radar. We're going to enable the radar on this particular vessel as well. And we're going to try to find the guy who's jamming us right now. So um, it's going to be relatively easy to find a jammer, but finding the other forces as, for as long as you're jammed is going to be very difficult. So let's uh, just run the time a little bit and let's see where this guy is because we're going to actually attack them right away there we go i think i think it's somewhere here you can kind of see that the, the jammer is causing us to not really see anything we are basically are being um completely blinded by the the prowler aircraft that's how powerful they actually are and this is one of the reasons why uh when the american um, Air Force and American Army and Navy wanted to actually introduce the new F-35 aircraft. The Marines were refused to use them because for them stealth is not as important, but jamming is essential. It's it's better to actually jam your enemy's radar than, than to try to be stealthy to enemy radar. And uh, you can kind of see something is incoming right here. And it's a uh, bogey number 59. And that is an aircraft that's moving at high altitude, high speed and is very likely MiG-29 aircraft that's going to be buzzing our aircraft and trying to provoke us to attack, which we are totally doing because we are, we are the crazy China. We're the China with only one mission, kill, kill, kill. Mostly because I want to show you how the battles in this, work, uh, in this game work. And honestly, the battles will usually not start right away, but um, they will be so much fun. There's so many scenarios in this game and so many difficult scenarios that you'll probably try to play through them over and over again just to try to beat the game without losing too many forces. And it's ridiculously fun, especially because all of the weaponry here is very, very, very realistic. Okay, so I still don't see the jammer. I don't know where he's... Oh, there he is. I got him. Yep, there he is. Let's go and uh, destroy him. Now, uh, since this game is very realistic, the fuel settings are also important here. And we kind of... We found the enemy ships there, right here. Um, and at some point, the aircraft will need to go back to base. Uh, you can actually change the speed. Like, for example, if I go in here... No, not in here at all. If I go in here and uh, change the speed to like let's just say military they'll start burning fuel a lot faster after burner will be even faster and like if someone launches missiles at you you may want to turn around and use after burner to try to get out of the range of the missiles which i'll show you in a second it's a very common tactic that i often use to basically not die but it doesn't always help uh the difficult part of this mission is that US actually has some of the best destroyers in this particular mission, meaning that um, when things go south, and they'll, they'll go south pretty quick because I'm about to attack this jammer, um, it's very likely that you will need to, um, you'll basically need to be aware that their destroyers have some of the prime premium missiles in the world their anti-air missiles can reach really really far like i was when i was just played this mission for the first time i was shocked at how far their missiles can reach like you can see that my missiles go this far theirs can essentially reach up to like almost 200 kilometers or something something cool something ridiculous like that so they were able to shoot down my aircraft like like it was nothing all right so we have two su-30 flankers they're, these are less superior to our SU-33s, uh, also known as Flying Sharks, also known as J-15, which is the Chinese version of that aircraft. Um, some of these uh, aircraft and boats will actually have pictures and photos, but not all of them. And you can download um, this from a workshop, from the Steam Workshop, if you actually want them. Um, oh, and speaking of, uh, if I go to the Community Hub here, if I actually click on the Steam Workshop, there's a ridiculous amount of stuff here. Uh, all of the scenarios, lots of scenarios lots of different community patches lots of uh content for you to explore and a lot of it will basically turn this game into thousands of hours of entertainment especially if you like war games anyway so here comes the war we're about to start it we're just going to go ahead and attack this um jammer and to do this we're going to uh fly toward it we don't have to but it helps 
and uh, we're going to essentially engage the target manually we're going to click on the uh, manual attack it, it shows you right away that you can fire these missiles let's just fire two of them and boom done and you can see everything has become red and that's because the war is now officially uh, the war has started now hopefully I will be able to destroy the jammer and this will allow me to see um, really far and I'll be able to detect enemy aircraft right away and also enemy boats uh, but we'll see what happens so this might destroy the, pr the prowler and uh, the uh, sound that you just heard is basically telling me that we've detected um, several missiles flying toward my flying sharks I think they're coming from here and that's probably from the aircraft that was there earlier so here's the going to be my attempt to avoid them I'm gonna afterburner this way away from the missiles completely actually no this way completely away from the missiles and here we go let's see if we can survive this there's going to be new contact detected okay so this is definitely the ship shooting at me because there's so many missiles flying at me right now and there's a big chance we're not going to survive this uh did i okay i totally missed the jammer the jammer was able to deceive my missiles uh, or actually my my um my aircraft and it turns out that the jammer was farther or closer to me than it, than it actually appeared so that means that my missiles will now have missed them and it looks like i'm going to be losing my aircraft as well yep the missiles that are coming toward them are probably going to destroy them right so they were able to avoid uh, the first batch of missiles but there's a big chance they might not survive the second batch so let's see what happens i'm kind of extra curious we're going to um, see if we can maybe fly away and also try to attack the prowler once again so surprisingly my su-33s also known as j-15s we're able to avoid pretty much every single launch of those uh, missiles. I don't know what, where, where they're coming from. I'm guessing there is some aircraft that I wasn't able to detect. Um, but we do see these guys coming toward us. And these are F-18s. Very likely from the American aircraft carrier that's somewhere in the area. And so we're going to actually attack these guys. And I'll, get, I'll hopefully be able to destroy something before the end of this video. And essentially, this is how this game works. I honestly think this is probably one of the best um, military simulators I've ever played and I definitely highly recommend that you also uh, get this game it does get um, sales once in a while so I was able to buy this with like 75% off which is ridiculously uh, cheap oh it looks like we have a new type of uh, missile being launched at us uh, usually vampire suggests anti-ship missile now I don't really know where that's coming from but I'm guessing it's enemy submarine uh, I really wasn't really paying attention because I was kind of talking too much and also just kind of trying to show you what the game is like in a nutshell. And, uh, yep, they destroyed one of my flying sharks. It's this one right here. And there's one left that's going to be probably destroyed as well. But they might be able to destroy these F-18s, which is kind of what I wanted to do. Let's see if he escapes it. Oh, look at that. They missed. Ha, huh? suckers. Let's see if our missiles hit you, though. Here they come, and it activated its radar seeking uh, capabilities, and it's coming toward the enemy aircraft. Let's see if it will get it. Uh, okay, so before we finish this video, let me just summarize this game for you and I'll let you know if, if it's worth buying it for you as well. If you don't think graphics are important and you just want a really super realistic strategy game that has tons of scenarios, tons of gameplay content, uh, that's essentially a very good simulation of a war. Oh yeah, we got it. We got this one. Uh, this one aircraft here. Uh, in that case, this is the game for you. It's definitely the best, uh, most realistic strategy game I've ever played in my life. If, however, graphics are kind of important, you want to have at least something visible, or at least have some kind of a uh, maybe sound music that's not too repetitive, because that's basically the, one of the biggest weaknesses in, of this game. There's really little music. There's only one tune that always plays that I kind of decided to disable because it's kind of annoying. And um, I lost my second uh, aircraft. That's not good. Anyway, uh, and if uh, music and visual effects are important for you, you'll probably hate this. I mean, most people compare this to like playing Excel, <laughs> the video game. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not for everyone. But in terms of realism, in terms of being able to 
uh, hypothetically play through some of the war scenarios that could have caused war in real life. Like, for example, right now, I'm in South Korea where war could have broken out any moment due to nuclear uh, threat from North Korea. And there are those scenarios that you can actually play through and, you know, pretend that the war started, what we would do, who's going to win, and, and so on. So there's a lot of really cool scenarios to play through and uh, a lot of really interesting hypothetical ideas. But, you know, for any war gamer that actually loves realism, this is this is a must-have. I, I honestly think there's no better game I can recommend for anyone who um, who's into war gaming, realistic war gaming, and uh, considers themselves uh, the master college general. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I'm clearly losing here because I've already lost two aircraft. Uh, you can see that something else has been destroyed. I believe it's one of my reef installations. And my ships are not doing well either because they have these vampire missions uh, missiles headed toward them. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this with someone who might also enjoy uh, playing these realistic war games. And who would want to possibly explore uh, these hypothetical scenarios in real life. I'll see you guys tomorrow. You're going to learn something else interesting, something else amusing, and something else educational. Come back tomorrow, I'll see you later, space out, and as always, bye bye. And I might actually play through one of these games uh, just for fun in one of the future videos because I honestly love this game, I spent so much time playing it, uh, especially on the go because this works very well on my laptop, and um, I might actually record one of these playthroughs, especially if it's one of the missions I really enjoy, like this one. Anyway, I'll see you later, bye bye.